passion. We are honored to showcase a passionate trainer, counselor, and an emotional intelligence specialist. His areas of expertise are learning and development, hypnotism, counseling, psychology, transactional analysis, and emotional intelligence. He has been adjusted as the outstanding national trainer of JCI India for the year 2020, Ravi Puraskar Award, and has been adjudged as one of the top 50 iconic trainers of JCI India for the year 2021. He has also trained thousands of teachers in technology, pedagogy, and content knowledge in association with Microsoft in education. He is Mr. Chandra Chudeswaran representing India. Thank you so much, sir. The stage is yours. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Anusha. Let me share my screen. Are you able to see my screen now? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, very uh, pleasant uh, evening, uh, Nandal present here. Uh, before getting into the session, let us uh, start with the uh, mind game. I, I am showing this uh, particular slide to you. Uh, there are uh, some answers. I'll be giving you two minutes time to find the answers. Time, your time starts now. Please give a try. You can use the chat window to respond. Can I have some answers? I'm not good with this kind of games. Okay. Uh, please give a try. Any guesses? 60 is repeated, okay. Uh, yeah, you have one more minute to answer. Okay, let me show the answer. The answers are, Four seasons in a year, 12 months in a year, 52 weeks in a year, seven days in a week, 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute, 31 days, there are some months with 31 days, there are some months with 30 days, and there are there is a month with 28 days. Yeah, how do you feel now? Uh, for some of us uh, this is evening, for some of us, uh, some of us uh, this may be afternoon, morning. How do you feel now? You can use the chat window to respond. Whether you're feeling sleepy, tired, or uh, uh, you feel happy now. How do you feel now? You can use the chat window to respond. If you're feeling tired, sleepy, if you're tired, if you're feeling sleepy, you can use one. If you're feeling tired, you can use two. If you feel uh, you're uh, very happy and excited, you can use the three. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you, <laughs> Sylvia. Thank you, Teacher Shalini. Okay, thank you very much for your responses. Wherever you are sitting, please close your eyes. Concentrate on my voice, only on my voice. 
all other noises you hear will help you to concentrate more and more on my voice. Please sit tight, close your eyes. Concentrate on my voice and only on my voice. I'm going to play the sound. Just listen to the sound and concentrate on my voice. All other noises you hear will help you to concentrate more and more on my voice. Let go your tiredness. Relax. Slowly. Gently. Relax your forehead. Eyes. Ears. Nose. Lips. Integrate your mind and body to concentrate more and more on the session of the body members. Relax. When you're relaxing, let go of fear, tension, and sickness. Slowly, gently open your eyes. Before understanding what is empathetic concern, we must know what is the difference between intelligent questions and emotional questions. There was a study to understand the successfulness of human beings. The study found that 80% of our emotional quotient helps, to, helps us to be better human beings and to be very successful in our professions and our business. And with only 20% of intelligent questions, we can be very successful in our profession. There are some examples for this. Can, can someone tell me who is this personality? You can use the chat window to respond. She's an Indian. Yeah, this is Indra Nui. There was a study conducted how come a person who was born in a small city in India had reached heights and became the CEO of PepsiCo company? It's not because of her technical skills or not because of her knowledge. It is because of her human relationship skills. She was good at human relationships. She was good at handling people. She was good at handling her own emotions. She was good at understanding and acknowledging others' emotion. There's another personality. Any guesses? Who is this personality? You can use, use the chat window to respond. Yeah, this is Dirubai Ambani. Thank you. This, this was Dirubai Ambani. He started his life from the scratches. He was a sales boy or a delivery boy in a petrol bank in India. He has built his own kingdom in India. Now, Reliance Group is one of the largest, biggest business giants in India. Behind his successful, behind his success, there was his emotional quotient. He was so successful because he was so good at handling relationship and relating with others. These skills help these two Indians to reach their highest level. So with 20% of our technical skills and 80% of human relationship, we can be successful in our life. There was a study conducted in Turncut Leadership Group. They, 
segregated very successful managers and those are very good at technical knowledge or technicalities those who are very successful are not only good at technical knowledge they were very good at human relationship they were very good at handling others emotion they were very good at handling their own emotions so because of this they were successful managers in this particular company yes my dear friends if you want to be successful in your life you should be good at handling others and your emotion it is said that those who can handle and understand one's emotions can understand others emotions very well and very nicely in daniel goleman emotional intelligence emotional intelligence model he has given five domains the first one is self awareness motivation self regulation social skills but he has emphasized on empathy empathy is very very important to have relationship yes the world is all about relationship if you are good at relationship you can be very successful it's very important to understand and handle your own emotions to understand and handle other emotions you may be a teacher you may be a leader you may be a community leader you may be a politician you may be a businessman you may be a professional all we need is empathy and emotional intelligence talks about empathy empathy is very very important for a successful life emotional intelligence also known as emotional quotient when your when your emotional intelligence is measured that becomes your emotional quotient the ability to understand use and manage your own emotions in positive way to relieve stress communicate effectively empathize with others overcome challenges and diffuse conflict yes my dear friends it's all about relationship how we handle the interpersonal and intrapersonal now the so the same so emotional intelligence has become social emotional learning what is social how we relate with others and what is emotional how we manage the self these two are very very important as educators as teachers you should know social emotional learning or emotional intelligence to have a better relationship most of the doctors in the united states of america are sued because of their approach any guesses or have you read any article relating to this if you have any experience on this you can use this chat window to share your experiences will be given 30 seconds time okay let me answer most of the doctors in the united states of america are sued not because of their bad approach or ill treatment because they lack empathy when the patient is present presenting about his illness the doctors generally they don't look at the patient's eyes or they don't listen to the patient keenly or they don't try to understand their body language so in a ai book by daniel goleman he starts he states about the empathy empathy is very very important for a human relationship empathy is an important element of emotional intelligence it can be described simply as to put yourself in others shoes by doing so you become more aware of the feelings and emotions of other people we know emotional intelligence is a critical skill in the workplace relating with others and relationship management is the integral in main ingredients of the emotional intelligence there are three types of empathy the first one is cognitive empathy cognitive empathy is nothing but understanding the other person's feeling on a content level for example my students are sharing their feelings or my colleague is sharing his feeling or my spouse is feeling sharing her feeling just i try to understand the content level i don't understand the feeling part of the person the the uh, presenting problem then it becomes cognitive empathy let me give you example cognitive empathy for example 
if a friend doesn't get a job they interview for, we can see that they are hurting and disappointed and we can also understand why they would feel this way after not being offered the job. Say for example, if you try to understand the other person's, other person's feeling on a content level, that becomes cognitive empathy. The next type of empathy is emotional empathy. For example, when you feel physically along with the other person, as though their emotions are contagious. For example, feeling the same emotion as the other person, feeling our own distress in response to their pain, feeling compassion toward the other person. In this level of empathy, we try to understand the other person's feeling as well as content. In simpler terms, we try to understand both spoken and unspoken language of the opposite person. Let us try to understand it better. Cognitive empathy versus emotional empathy. For example, I say to someone, I am sorry, you are sad and that you are going through is hard. In emotional empathy, same thing is extended further. I am sorry to hear about your grandmother. I know you miss her. I am here for you. When you try to understand the other person's feeling with the content, then you are empathizing the person's in an emotionally empathy way. So we should understand the difference between cognitive empathy and emotional empathy. These are the two different methods of empathy. And the third method is compassionate empathy. In this empathy, we try to understand a person's feeling, spoken language, and we try to help the person to come out of the feeling one step ahead. With this kind of empathy, we not only understand a person's predicament and feel with them, but also spontaneously, spontaneously move to help if needed. So when we try to help that person with a further step, that becomes compassionate empathy. This compassionate empathy is also known as empathetic concern or empathic concern. Yes, my dear friends, we should understand these three empathy models clearly to understand other person, to understand other person's feeling, to acknowledge other person's feeling and to have a better relationship. I repeat, there are three types of empathy, cognitive, emotional and compassionate. This compassionate empathy only becomes empathetic concern. Yes, I have a concern for my own fellow human being. It can be any relationship as a teacher, as an educator with your students, as a person with your spouse or with your immediate parents or with your family members or with your friends or a person whom you meet. Example, Imagine that one of your team members is upset and angry because he or she delivered an important presentation badly. Acknowledging their hurt is valuable and affirming their reaction by showing signs of those feelings yourself even more so. But best of all is putting aside some time for them and offering practical support or guidance on getting through the situation and preparing for next time. Yes, this becomes compassionate empathy. We don't only try to understand the feel, feeling part or we don't only un try to understand the content part of the presenting problem. We also have that space for a person, the other person that becomes your compassionate empathy. Yes, my dear friend. All the time, we may not be able to practice all the three types of empathy, but try to understand and apply accordingly. Response. Response matters a lot in a conversation or in communication. There are two responses. One is called as shift response. The another one is called support response. 
What is the difference between these two? For example, a person is sharing about his or her pain. When we try to shift the focus of the person's pain to us, and I started telling, yes, from this afternoon, I am also having severe headache. I feel like drinking coffee. I feel like relaxing. I'm unable to concentrate on my work. Rather, helping the person to understand, acknowledge, and overcome the problem which he or she facing currently. This becomes shift response. What is support response? Instead of bringing the focus from that person to me, I'm giving comfort. I'm comforting the other person. I'm empathizing the other person to understand his or her pain and I'm acknowledging it properly. That becomes support response. Yes, my dear friends, we should know the difference between shift and support response. Never, never try to bring the focus of a person who is in need, who is in pain to you. Always try to support a person, empathize a person, give comfort, pat, give space, give time, give your words. That moment may change the person. In simpler terms, shift response, the tendency to shift attention from the other person to yourself. Support response, it is a response that focuses on the thoughts and feelings of the other person. The choice is yours. Yes, my dear friends, the world is all about relationship. In relationship, empathy plays a very important role. Okay, never, never try to bring other person's pain to your focus. Then there are two types of messages. Any clue, any idea, what is the difference between social message and psychological message? Use this chat window to give your responses. Your time starts now. What is the difference between social message and what is an psychological message? Message. What do you mean by psychological message and what do you mean by social message? You are given one minute time to respond for this. Please give a try. Okay, let me only answer. The social message is what you said. The cyclist social message is for all and the other one has to be particular event or for an individual. Thank you, Mona. Actually, the actual meaning of social message is the spoken words. What you convey, that becomes your social message. How you convey it, that becomes your psychological message. The opposite person who is in front of you can understand better the psychological message, not the social message. So what you say is not important. How you say is very, very important. I repeat, my dear friends, what you say is not important. How you say is very, very important. You being the, we being the helping professionals, we should be, yeah, body language, very good. Body language is also very important. That's what I say. What you say that becomes social message. How you say it, that becomes your psychological message. For example, I may say to a person, I love you. Okay. You, my verbal language is different from my body language. This is called incongruence. Okay. Whatever you speak, it should align with your body. It is said that your body doesn't lie. Only our tongue can lie. Our body don't know how to lie. 
So what you said says social message, how you say is psychological message. So in empathy, psychological message plays a very, very vital role. How you say, how you comfort the other person, the person will understand your genuineness. The person will understand your congruence with the help of your with the help of the synchronization of body and verbal language. So be cautious about conveying the social message and psychological message. Practicing empathy in, 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 is very important in variety of relationship dynamics in business partners, with colleagues, in the community group, with co-workers, in families, with friends, marriages and with siblings so empathy is very very important as i said earlier empathy plays a vital role the world is all about relationship if you are good at relationship if you are good at listening if you are good at comforting if you are good at understanding your own emotions and you are good at understanding others emotion your relationship becomes better when your relationship becomes better, everything becomes better. I like Louise Hay. Always she says, the moment you change, the world around you will change. I repeat, my dear friends, the moment you change, the world around you will change. Yes, please practice empathy. Love people whom you meet. Okay, pay attention to them. Give some space to them. Give your warmth. The other person should feel the warmth when you speak. It doesn't mean that you have to literally hug or touch or pat your words. The way you speak should give the comfort, should give the warmth to the other person. Yes, my dear friends, as educators, as education influencers, we should practice this. We should give that warmth to our children. We should give, we should try to give the warmth to the other person. When the person is talking to us, they should feel the warmth, the love, the care with the words we use. Yes, the choice of words are very, very important. That is why I always say your word should make a person. You should your, your word should never break a person. What you say is important, but how you say is very, very important. These are the ingredients of empathy. Users of empathy, you know. Empathy allows you to build social connection with others. Well, empathizing with others helps you to learn and regulate your own emotions. Empathy promotes helping behaviors. When we try to empathize others, others also will try to empathize us in a need, in a, I mean, on a need basis. So the six seconds are very, very important. What is the critical uh, part of this six seconds. Any idea? Have you read any articles or uh, have you any, have you heard any podcast uh, on six seconds? What do you mean by six seconds? I'll give you one minute time. Even you can browse and find out what is the critical criticality of this six seconds. Reaction. Thank you very much. Whether you want to respond or whether you, are, you want to react, what helps you to make a good relationship? Whether the reaction or respond, very good, the response. Yes, the essence of psychology is your stimulus besides my response. The moment we receive some stimulus or stimuli, our brain's ability is to react. Our brain only knows how to react. It was designed to protect itself. And the very basic purpose of human brain is to survive. It can react or respond based on its previous experiences. Yes, my dear friends, this six seconds becomes very, very crucial. The moment you receive some messages it can be verbal it can be non-verbal we try to 
respond mostly we don't respond if we respond within 6 seconds it is called reaction if you delay it for 6 seconds then it becomes respond yes my dear friends whenever you listen to some conversations especially critical conversations think of your 6 seconds support response and also try to empathize and you can use one of these three types of empathy in your language yes if you understand the six seconds better you'll be you'll not be re reacting waiting six seconds will give you rational brain a chance to process the sensory information during those six seconds direct your thought process to think of what you want from this situation and for yourself. Whether you are responding or reacting, everything decided within this six seconds. In Indian culture, it is said that whenever you try to tend to react, close your eyes, say Rama Rama, say Krishna Krishna, that delays your reaction. Recently, I read an article that author says that close your eyes, and count for five times by repeating like this one mississippi two mississippi three mississippi four mississippi five mississippi within this five seconds automatically your brain's tendency to react will be mellowed down will be neutralized so you may not react rather you'll be responding yes always try to respond and try to empathize the other person. Hope you understood the ingredients of this. The final one is empathetic distress. Yes, I should empathize. We should empathize as human beings. But it should not be overwhelmingly done. If you try to do that, you may get into a distressed mode. Okay? When we empathize more and more and more, we should be able to identify the person and the issue. Sometimes we kind of interrelate and interconnect the person and the pain and we think that pain has come to me. For example, I am a counselor. When I am handling my own clients, I should be able to differentiate the pain and person and the issue and the person. I should empathize but I need not to cry for the other person's pain. If we practice this, that may distress us. So try to understand and try to not get into this mode. Yes, open your heart. With supportive people and friends, you take part in simple act of mutual affection. Survey the emotional landscape you focus on the ebb and flow of your own emotion and those of those of people around you. Listening with an open heart, you strain to understand emotions and their reasons, taking responsibility. You admit that with minor or major mistakes, you have hurt people in your life. You apologize and make amends. Yes, my dear students, skills can be learned and attitudes can be adopted, which is why emotional intelligence is changeable and developable. Always practice emotional intelligence. Always remember this six seconds in your life. Whether you are going to react or respond. When you respond, you are you are empathizing the other person. When you are reacting, you are hurting the self as well as the other person in front of you. When you give, you will get. With this, I conclude my session. Thank you very much for your active participation and patience listening. I also extend my sincere thanks to Education Influence for giving me such a wonderful opportunity to share my knowledge. I also extend my sincere thanks to Ms. Anusha for her regular follow and constant touch with me for this presentation. Thank you all. Thank you. Over to Anusha. Thank you. Thank you, Chandradusharam. Thank you so much for your amazing session on empathy. And we have we have people tuning in all the world, all over the world for 
all over the world for your session. And we will be showcasing your recorded session on our platform, educationinfluence.com after our event. And ladies and gentlemen, please unmute yourself. If you have any questions for Chanda to this room, please, please, please do meet, unmute yourself and the stage is yours. Thank you, John. I do have a very, very interesting, a very, very um, a question for you. But uh, it's uh, the question is: religious discourses often preach uh, people about compassion and empathy. Uh, Buddhism could be one of them, but materialists like Charvak in the Eastern philosophy do not show concerns about this. You know, what could be your take on this? You are on mute. Uh, could you please repeat the question again? Religious, uh, religious uh, discourses often preach people about compassion and empathy. But Buddhism could be one of them. Example, Buddhism could be one of them. But materialists like Charvak in the Eastern philosophy that do not show their concern about it. What could be a take on this? It's a charvaka. Um, it's like a, you know, it's a, like an, a, like a heterodox schools of uh, Indian philosophy. It's like a, like a concept of Indian philosophy. Just very curious question. Uh, yeah, actually see the base is, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, Indian culture. Uh, Buddhism also talks about uh, uh, I, uh, this uh, 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 respond or react. But in modern psychology, it's, it's better to read the book on uh, emotional intelligence by Daniel Goldman or there is a book called Emotional Literacy with Heart, with heart by um, Clark Tino. He talks about love. Love, the love can change the love for the self and the love for the others can change the world around you. Thank you. Thank you, Chandra. Thank you, Chandra. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. I'm really, really sorry. That's okay. And Jyoti Gupta says, I could be a good listener, but it goes hand in hand. How to create good listener in oh. others? <laughs> it's very, very difficult to ask. You need not to uh, try to make others to be good listener. You try to be good listener, that will uh, uh, solve many and most of the problems. Uh, but uh, see, that's what I said, the one point, congruence. When you speak, the other person understands the genuine interest and care and love you show unto the other person. The connection is very important when you talk to the person. If the person recognizes that you are not connected with the person, automatically he or she tend to lose the connection with you. So the connection part you take care, I think this problem can be sorted out. So you check the social message and psychological message you convey. You find the accountability partner or you find one of your family members to try to understand this. What is the difference? Is there any incongruence between your spoken and unspoken language? Unspoken language is nothing but your body language. You try to understand automatically, you can make others listen better to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please do unmute yourself. And please do unmute yourself or you, you may also register yourself. Do we have someone? Please do unmute yourself and register. If you if you'd like, you would register your uh, questions in the chat box as well. And I will be conveying it to Chandra to this one. Please do let us know if you have any questions and i would like to repeat that i would we would be showcasing chandra to this students session on our platform very very soon with all the resources and materials duly made available to you 
Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much, Anna Dusaram. Thank you so much for your session. Thank you, thank you so much thank for you. the opportunity. Uh, there is a there is a question by Ramadi. Uh, the demarcation line between sympathy and empathy. Sympathy is not understanding uh, other person, just feeling pity for the other person. Empathy is feeling understanding the other person's feeling and content as well. That is the difference. Okay. So we, when you uh, feel pity for the other person, that becomes sympathy. When you try to understand the other person, that becomes empathy. Practice empathy rather practicing sympathy. Wow. With this note, I conclude. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Chandra Jyotisaram. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much.